something you've seen before, but in a part of the world that's relatively new to the sport of drifting. This is happening in the capital of Afghanistan, where there are no sponsors, no official training facilities, no elaborate events, but where there's been an increase of interest in motorsports. An organizer of a race that took place earlier this month says enthusiasts are using their own money to set up and participate in events like this. And that's significant in an impoverished, war-torn nation where many can't afford the cars, the tires, and the boost. There may also be barriers to entry for women whose rights and education have been severely limited under the nation's Taliban rulers. But one 18-year-old woman in the crowd says she's been interested in events like this since she was younger and that she hopes girls can participate. Concerning the sport itself, the organizer says enthusiasts have high ambitions. There are five weekdays in the calendar, each with their own strengths, but Fridays are awesome. This is the world from A to Z with Carl Azus. I'm Carl Azus. It's great to have you watching. For most of the day yesterday, tens of thousands of American wireless customers couldn't make calls or access the internet. It was a nationwide outage that primarily affected AT&T customers, though those of some other providers said they also saw outages. This happened in several major cities across the country, from Los Angeles to New York, San Antonio to Detroit, Wichita to Atlanta. And though AT&T said it had everything back up and running by 4 p.m., it did not say what caused the outage. And speculation about that was all over the place, with tech experts and critics giving a range of very different theories, including human error. One thing the outage coincided with was a pair of solar flares, blasts of electromagnetic radiation from the sun. They caused temporary radio blackouts in some places, but experts that spoke to the Live Science website said they probably did not cause the U.S. wireless outages, partly because of where and when they were, and partly because it's hard to explain why they'd affect mostly AT&T customers, but not as many others. World and out. Which of these events last occurred in 1972? Fighting in the Vietnam conflict, defecting from East to West Berlin, democratic election in China, walking on the moon. More than half a century has passed since NASA's Apollo 17 mission landed a human on the moon. Making a soft landing, a controlled touchdown on the moon's surface is difficult even without people aboard. A U.S. company named Intuitive Machines attempted this Thursday. There was a delay and some communications problems with the spacecraft, but it did reach the moon's surface and started transmitting some information by the time we produced this show. This is a private mission, though NASA contributed $118 million to it. Why is it noteworthy considering the space successes of the 20th century? We are steely-eyed rocket scientists, but deep down, uh, this is quite an emotional feeling to, uh, to be here at this position. Just last month, a Pennsylvania company, Astrobotic Technology, had its first lunar landing mission end in failure. And last year, the Japanese company iSpace and the government of Russia both crashed landers into the moon. So why is it so tough to repeat a feat that was first accomplished more than half a century ago? The biggest reason is money. In an effort to save money, NASA is outsourcing robotic lunar landings to companies like Intuitive Machines for a fraction of what it cost in the 1960s and 70s. Do it for $100 million, when in the past it's been billions of dollars. Then there's the purely technical challenge of landing a spacecraft in a specific spot roughly a quarter of a million miles away. Some people have likened it to, uh, you know, hitting a golf ball in New York and having it go into a particular hole in one in L.A. The distance means there's also a time delay, roughly three seconds for signals from mission control rooms on Earth to get to the moon and back. A lot can go wrong in that time. So when the vehicle is actually landing, it pretty much is on its own. Finally, there's the experience factor, the loss of the Apollo era expertise that no amount of new technology can make up for. Simply because somebody else did it in an earlier age doesn't mean that this generation or this organization can do it. These are people doing it for the first time. 
and uh, there's, no, there's no substitute for that experience. Freedom of speech is only one part of the First Amendment. It also includes the freedom of religion, press, assembly, and petition. Exercise your right to learn more at PeriodicPresidents.com. On this date in world history. In the 1830s, Texans had been fighting for independence from Mexico, and some early battles forced Mexican troops to retreat. But on this day in 1836, Mexican forces under General Santa Ana attacked and laid siege to the Alamo Mission compound, killing nearly all of the Texian volunteers guarding the fortress. Remember, the Alamo became a rallying cry for Texans, and under General Sam Houston, they later defeated and captured Santa Ana, and Texas became an independent republic. In 1945, one of the most iconic images of World War II was taken, Marines planting the U.S. flag on the highest peak of Iwo Jima. A few days earlier, they'd stormed the tiny island south of Japan and a fierce battle began, causing tens of thousands of casualties on both sides. The U.S. declared victory a month later, and the man who shot the photo went on to win a Pulitzer Prize. It can happen when you're tired or because you're juggling too much. If you get easily distracted, you're not alone. Our brains need gas in the tank to concentrate. Sleeping enough, taking breaks, taking time in nature. Think of them as fuels for our attention. Chasing Life podcast host Dr. Sanjay Gupta says self-care is the first step in avoiding distraction. He says it can also improve our attention span. So can planning to do the hardest work in front of you at the time of day that you tend to be most focused. Gupta says to also be aware of unconscious distractions and make them intentional. For example, instead of reaching for your phone when you hear a ping, say, I'll answer that text in 30 minutes after I finish this step. And when you're getting a project done, be aware of thoughts that distract you. He says not to dwell on them, write them down instead. Jotting those other to-do list items down can actually help offload them from our brains and keep you focused. Gupta says to also keep a tidy workspace. He says research shows clutter can have a negative impact on executive function and mental health. And finally, think of a large task in front of you as a series of smaller tasks. Studies show that our brains tend to prioritize small tasks over large ones. You will create opportunities as well to feel a sense of accomplishment, which will energize you to keep going. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. We're spotlighting schools from east to west today on The World From A to Z. First, from the mountain state of West Virginia, we're excited to see Mrs. Keel's class at Mountaineer Middle School. Thanks for watching from the city of Morgantown. And about 2,100 miles west in the city of Exeter, California, hello to Mr. Giltner's students. Great to see y'all at Exeter High School in the Golden State. NASA's looking for a few good Martians or Martian wannabes, or people to live in an apartment in Texas. The space organization's doing earthbound research to simulate what life on Mars might be like. So it's recruiting four applicants to spend a year inside a 1,700 square foot habitat in Houston. They'll have to deal with limited supplies, simulated equipment problems, communication issues, and so-called spacewalks that'll involve stepping outside. The plan is to learn what to expect if people ever set foot on the red planet. But Earthlings can't be saturnine about the experience or ask for a Mercury do, even if critics say it mars their reputation that they'd V nuts to Jupiter, turn their attention or Neptune their thoughts to a totally different lifestyle. It's an otherworldly experience, even if they plan it. <laughs> I'm Carl Azus, and I hope your weekend is out of this world, y'all. It means the world to me to have you watching the world from A to Z.